Hi everyone, this is Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and in this video series we're going to be making the Sunflower Shopping Tote. Um, this is the uh, the first pattern for the weekend collection for the Carried Away Pattern Collective. Um, so before we start, I'm just going to go through the list of supplies that you'll need. Um, in this video I'm just going to talk about the supplies um, the pattern pieces and cutting it interfacing. Um, so in terms of supplies, uh, this bag doesn't require a lot of hardware. The only things that you will need um, absolutely is these one and a half inch uh, O-rings and you'll need four of those. Um, you can also, um, for the, the main zipper closure, uh, it's optional, but I'm going to use a metal zipper end for the end of my zipper. Um, but you can also uh, just make a, a fabric zipper end. And there's I have a link to a tutorial inside the pattern. Um, so you can do whatever you prefer. I like this because it's a little bit faster. And I also like the, the look of the metal zipper end. But um, if you're worried about uh, cost, then you can just use the tutorial for the fabric version. You're also going to need two 9-inch zippers. Um, you can use uh, any size zipper, the smaller number 3 dress zippers or 4.5 uh, or number 5 zippers. This is the number 5 zippers. Um, so it just means that the, so it's really it's referring to the size of the zipper coil. Um, but for my purpose, I just pay attention to the width of the zipper tape because I deal with measurements a lot when I'm designing patterns. So this zipper tape is one and a quarter inches wide and the number three zippers are only one inch wide. Um, so you can use any size zipper for the nine inch zippers. Now I'm using zipper tape. This is the zipper tape that I sell in my shop. So when you're using zipper tape instead of pre-made zippers, you should always cut in an additional two inches of zipper. So these are actually 11 inches. Now for the main closure of the bag, you're going to need an 18 inch zipper and you can either use a pre-made zipper or a zipper tape and the length will be the same in this case because we're actually trimming the zipper in the end. Um, so whether you're using a pre-made zipper or zipper tape, you, can, you need a 18 inches of zipper. Now, you'll also need um, some piping. The piping is optional, uh, but I will be uh, using piping in this video. Um, so you need a total of 84 inches of piping, and this, I just use one of these little packages. It's two and a half yards, which I think is about 90 inches, so um, that should be enough. One package is enough. And... You'll also, the last thing you'll need is some elastic. And the elastic is used to gather the top of the side pockets on either end of the bag on the gusset uh, for the exterior. So you just need 16 inches of elastic. And I buy mine by the roll. So I always have plenty. I'm just gonna cut 16 inches. So that's all you're going to need. You're gonna cut that in two later on. Um, so that you have eight inches for each pocket. Um, and then that's it. That's all you need in terms of supplies. Now the next thing you'll want to do is uh, start by reading the pattern pieces section of the pattern. Uh, don't mind my little scribbles here. These are just little notes to myself. Um, so you'll want to print out all of the pattern pieces but you'll want to print out page 20, I think it's, I believe it's page 23, uh, the inner band piece. You're going to want to print two copies. And so one of them you'll cut out at the exterior solid line. And then the second one you're going to cut out along the, the dash line. You're, when you're cutting out along the fold line, it's always the same solid line. Um, you're going to use this one to cut your firm sewing sew-in interfacing and this one you're going to use to cut your inner bands. Um, those are what you see on the inside of the bag right on either side of the, the zipper. Now you'll only need to tape 
together a few pieces. So uh, you'll need to tape together both lining pieces. Don't worry if the stars don't line up, they're just to show you which sides to tape together. And I didn't tape together my um, my exterior zipper facing pieces because I want to give you a little tip. Um, so when I'm having to tape together pieces, I always leave a little extra paper along the dashed line of one of the pieces so that I can overlap them when I'm taping and it just makes it stronger at the tape line. And when I'm taping together, I always tape on both sides, so I'll tape there, and then I'll tape again here. Now you're going to see with this pattern piece and the main body pattern piece, which I'll show you shortly, you're actually going to be cutting out those shapes, um, but I won't do that just yet. I did do it for the main body because I prepared all of my pieces and cut them out. So you'll you'll need to tape together three main body pieces and again uh, leave a little bit extra on one of the pieces along the dash line so that you have an overlap when you're taping them together. Um, then just make sure you're taping where the symbols are matching. And here there is also another piece to cut out. I, like I said, I did go ahead and do that already because I wanted to uh, cut out all of my pieces for the video. But um, I'll show you this a little bit in the next step. And then you have your corner accent and your O-ring connector pieces. The rest of the pieces are all uh, cut to measurements. So I did provide a cutting chart in the pattern. I believe it is on page. I always write what page number it is in case you just want to print out a fresh cutting chart. It's on page 17 of the pattern. Um, I actually don't really use uh, this section of the pattern at all. If there's a cutting chart, I always just print out the cutting chart and use that. Um, you can print out a fresh copy if you like, uh, and then as you're cutting pieces, you can just put a little check mark to say that you've cut out that piece. Um, if you don't want to print a fresh one each time, then you can just use a pencil and erase it. I also have some testers who use um, the fabric pens where the ink um, disappears. And then by the time they just apply heat and then boom, it's gone. Um, so I'm going to go through all of the pieces next that we need to cut. And then um, any special interfacing requirements, I'll go through all of those next. Okay, so we're now going to go through uh, the cutting, the cutting portion of the pattern. Um, I was debating whether to go through um, exterior pieces and then lining pieces, but I think it'll be simpler if I just uh, follow the, the cutting chart in order. And um, I do have the pieces um, prepared here on the side, so bear with me if I have to uh, go and get some of the pieces to show you. Um, so first you're going to start with the main body pattern piece. And with this pattern piece, you're going to cut your exterior fabric. So this is um, the very large panels that you see on the front and the bag of the back of the bag um, on the exterior. And I have my two exterior fabrics, the matching woven interfacing, and the fusible fleece pieces. Now for one of these, and this is in the interfacing portion, um, but I'm going to, and I'm going to show you how we're going to use this cutout to cut out the box for our fusible fleece, and I'll show you that in a in a moment. That's going to be for your exterior zipper pocket. Okay, and then your O-ring connectors. So these are your O-ring connectors. Now you have to cut sets, uh, mirror image sets from this pattern piece. Um, so a simple way to do it is, um, I'm using cork, and you can use vinyl, it doesn't really matter. Um, 
what you'll want to do, I just leave my cork or my vinyl uh, with the wrong side facing up. And then I want to make sure that I have my four mirror image uh, sets. So that makes a total of eight pieces. So you'll see you need to have some where you're going to be sewing them uh, right sides together. So to make this simple, what I usually do is I draw the shape on the on the wrong side. So I do four with the words showing on the pattern piece and then I flip it over and then I trace out four where I flipped it to the wrong side of the pattern piece. And then I know I have um, exactly four sets mirror image. I do the same thing for the corner accent pieces. So I make this here, you only need um, two sets mirror image, so four pieces total. And you want them for the four corners, bottom corners of the main body exterior pieces. So I do the same thing. I draw two with the writing showing, flip it over, and draw another two, and then I cut everything out. So I'm just going to set these aside. Uh, my exterior zipper facing piece. Um, there is this pattern piece. And the it's actually the same size uh, zipper facing for the interior zipper pocket. However, um, you'll notice the exterior zipper. I added um, this shape of the zipper opening because I gave it some uh, round curved edges. I really like uh, really like those, and I find it's easier to make the ends look nicer than the standard rectangle box. So I use this pattern piece and I cut um, one exterior fabric because you want your facing to be the same fabric as your exterior panel and a matching fusible woven interfacing. So set that aside. And then your inner band pieces. So um, I'll show you the pattern piece for this. So this is your pattern piece and it, I find it hard to cut cork and vinyl on the fold so what I usually do is I do the same as I did for the o-ring connectors and the corner accent pieces. Um, I just place my pattern piece and I trace all the way around on the wrong side of my cork or my vinyl and then I just flip it making sure that this edge is lined up with the line that I drew and then I trace it out. And then you'll see one of the benefits is that you already have your centers marked on the wrong side of your cork or your vinyl when you do that. So you cut out two of those. Now you can use fabric. I chose to use cork for this uh, because my, my the, the zipper panel pieces are going to be cork on the exterior and I wanted it to all match. But you don't have to use cork. You can use fabric if you like. Uh, just make sure you pay attention to the cutting chart. Um, if you're using cork, um, sorry, if you're using fabric, you're going to need to cut out um, the uh, the fusible woven interfacing. If you're using cork or vinyl, you don't need that. You just need your cork or vinyl. Okay, I'm going to set these aside. Now from your lining pattern piece, oh actually I should mention from the, uh, the inner band, the interior piece, remember the piece that we cut along the dash line, you're going to cut um, two firm sew-in interfacing. You can use fusible if you like, but I always use sew-in and I glue it. So I actually did the same thing and um, Peltex is hard to cut on the fold. This is what I'm using. I'm using Peltex. Um, it's hard to cut it on the fold so I did the same thing and traced out and then one of the benefits again is that I have my center marks already and then you'll see on the interfacing section uh, that's coming up next it makes it easier to glue your uh, interfacing in the wrong in the right place on the wrong side of your inner band pieces. Um, okay, so the lining, just, I think I'm done with the cork, so I'm just going to put that aside. So your lining pattern piece, you're going to cut um, two lining pieces on the fold. Okay, 
here are my two lining pieces and I cut two matching uh, uh, fusible interfacing. Now with this piece you're also going to cut your interior slip pocket pieces. So you just, you'll see there's the dash line where you tape those pieces together and then there's another dash line here. You're going to fold this top portion at that dash line and then you're going to use this bottom portion to cut your slip pockets on the fold. So here are my slip pocket pieces. Okay. And I have two of these, and then I have the matching fusible interfacing for those as well. And that's it for this pattern piece. Now the rest of the, the uh, pieces are cut to measurement. So I have my zipper panel pieces. So I've decided to do the exterior pieces in cork. Um, you can use uh, fabric for all four, but I've decided to use cork for the exterior and fabric for the lining. So if you're using, like me, if you're doing uh, uh, cork or vinyl on the top and then uh, fabric on the bottom, you're only going to need to cut two fusible interfacing, but if you're using fabric for all four, then you're going to want to cut four pieces like this. Okay, side gusset. So side gusset is um, the sides of the bag and you need to cut two, I'm just trying to find them here. So I have two lining pieces with matching fusible interfacing and then my two exterior pieces with matching fusible interfacing and you also need two uh, fusible fleece for the exterior pieces. Your exterior side pockets. So these will be my side pockets. Um, they are 10 inches wide by 17 inches high. Um, and if you can visualize it, so I did mine all one piece because I have like a repeating pattern so I'm not worried about fabric direction but you'll need to keep in mind when you're cutting this piece that you're actually going to be folding this in half and then this will be your the top edge of your your pocket uh, where you're going to put your elastic later so when you're cutting keep that in mind if you're using a directional print and you really don't want to do the folding you can cut this piece in two separate pieces. So each side pocket, instead of cutting one big piece that's 10 inches wide by 17 inches high, what you can do instead is cut two pieces that are 10 inches wide and then you'll have to, so 17 inches is actually eight and a half inches if you divide it by two, but then you want to add some seam allowance to sew them together. So just, just add half an inch. So cut two pieces that are 10 inches by nine inches high, and then you'll just have to sew them together and then press open and then fold them like this. That way there you can use a directional print. Just make sure when you're sewing them together that you're sewing them where the print is facing the right direction um, along the top where you're sewing it. Hopefully that wasn't too complicated. Okay, so I have two exterior side pocket pieces and two fusible interfacing pieces. Now for the bottom, for the exterior I am using cork and for the interior I'm using my lining fabric. So my lining fabric I have a matching piece of fusible interfacing. Uh, for the exterior, I'm using cork, so I'm not using fusible interfacing. Um, I just cut uh, also the next item, which is the bottom firm interfacing. I cut this out of Peltex, and it is half an inch smaller all the way around. And we're going to be gluing that in a little bit. So that's the bottom. Exterior zipper pocket and interior zipper pocket are exactly the same size. And I actually, what I usually do is, because I, I, I tend to use um, the same size uh, lining pieces for my, my zipper pockets. I use 
almost always the same size. It depends on the pattern. I always just cut myself, it's like cardstock and it's 11 inches by eight inches and I use that to cut all these pieces. And so I have two lining pieces and two fusible interfacing for the exterior pocket. And I have exactly the same for the interior zipper pocket. We'll be sewing those slightly differently just because we're going to turn the bag through the interior zipper pocket, but I'll cover that a bit later. And I have my interior zipper facing, which is the same size as the exterior zipper facing, uh, but we're going to do a standard uh, rectangle uh, box opening for this zipper pocket. Um, so one lining piece, one fusible interfacing piece. And then the last item is your shoulder straps. Um, so you're going to cut two pieces. I'm using cork, so I don't need any fusible interfacing. But if you're using fabric, make sure you cut um, the matching uh, fusible interfacing for both pieces. And these pieces are three inches by 50 inches long. Now you're probably thinking that's really crazy long for a shoulder strap, but it's actually going to end up being half the length because um, and you'll see later when I make the straps uh, why it ends up being half the length. But you'll need two pieces and then make sure you cut interfacing if you're using fabric for these. Okay, so that is it for cutting. Now I'm going to go over to my ironing board and I'm going to fuse all of the uh, fusible interfacing to the wrong side of all of the matching pieces. And then uh, there's just a bit of gluing uh, that we need to do for the firm sew-in interfacing for the bottom and for the um, inner bands. And I'm also going to show you how to cut out the zipper pocket opening. Uh, from your fleece for the exterior zipper pocket. Okay, so most of the interfacing is, is straightforward. Um, there's just a few um, exceptions here. Um, so we want to glue the Peltex or the firm sew-in interfacing to both inner band pieces and to your bottom piece. Um, so what I'll do is I'm just I'm just using Fabri-Tac, which is a fabric glue, and just going to put. I try not to put too much because I don't really want to soak my cork with glue. I just want to put enough so that my interfacing uh, stays in place. And I also find this glue dries fairly quickly. Okay, so when you're gluing this, just make sure that um, you're leaving half inch of space all the way around. I don't want the Peltex to get caught in the seam allowance because um, your seams will be bulky and they won't really look very nice. And then what I do while it's drying is I put my ruler and a few heavy things. These are just glass paperweights. <laughs> And now, here's where those center lines come in handy for uh, gluing this interfacing to the wrong side of your inner band pieces. Um, again, don't go too crazy with the glue. I just put a really thin line. And I don't go right to the edges because sometimes if you're not really exact when you're sewing, um, like with your seam allowance, then you can trim to make sure that none of the um, interfacing goes into the seam allowance. Okay, and then again, you should have half an inch of space all the way around. If you don't, just um, trim a little bit. So now I'm just lining up my all of my center lines here. That's That way I know that my um, interfacing piece is directly in the center. Okay, and then I'll just add this here, weigh it down, and then I'm going to do the same with this piece. Um, so I'm just I'm just going to set this aside because the last thing I need to show you is um, cutting out this opening. 
So before I cut out the opening in the pattern piece, um, if I plan on making a lot of this pattern, what I what I do is I like to um, make this the edge here a little bit stronger. So what I'll actually do is I'll take a piece of tape, and I haven't done it yet for the the exterior zipper facing. So I'm going to show you that. So there's two pieces where you need to cut out the opening, uh, the main body piece and the exterior zipper facing piece. So before I cut out that opening, what I actually like to do is I like to put tape over the shape and then when I cut it out it just makes those edges stronger for when you're tracing out the shapes. So I'm not going to painfully show you uh, cutting out the shape but just go slowly especially around the curved ends because um, I really want that shape to look nice. So here I've already cut it out and I have my fusible woven uh, interfacing applied to the wrong side of one of my exterior panels, the main body exterior piece. And then I'm going to take the matching fleece. Just so you're just doing this to one of the fleece pieces. Um, you don't do it to both because you only have one exterior zipper pocket. So what I do is I fold it in half. It doesn't matter if it's glue sides together or what, it doesn't really matter because the shape is the same. So I just place this over top and then I don't, I don't like to use a rotary cutter or anything. What I'll do is I'll just use a marker and where's my other weight? And then I just trace out the shape really slowly because I really want a nice shape. And then I'm going to cut this out using a pair of scissors. Because I like to get these things done quickly, I'm just going to pin so that they don't shift while I'm cutting. And then use, um, I don't have my small pair of scissors here, unfortunately. I use my thread snips. And my scissors, where are my scissors? <laughs> Try to be more organized than me. Here they are. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut out this shape. And I use my bigger scissors to just cut the straight lines and then I'm going to use a small pair of sharp scissors to cut out the rounded end. It seems like a lot more work but I, I really love the way that the, um, the curved edges of the, um, the ends of the zipper pocket opening look rather than the standard rectangle shape. Okay, so you don't have to be super precise with this one because it's not as important as the the actual um, the fab cutting out the fabric part. Okay, so once this is done, now I'm going to take one of my main body pieces and place this, and you're going to fuse this in place. Okay, so I'm going to take that over to my ironing board and I'm going to fuse this in place. So obviously you're, this is the glue side facing the wrong side of your main body piece. Um, that is it for the um, interfacing section. And the next part of the, uh, the next video is going to start the exterior assembly of your bag.